This lesson is about the distinction between clinical versus behavioral benefits. Here's an adage you hear a lot in the domain of sales. Sell the sizzle, not the steak. Well, it's true in dentistry too. The behavioral benefit is the sizzle. The dentistry is the steak. This distinction between clinical versus behavioral benefits is one I wish I had learned much earlier in my career. My practice focused on implant and restorative dentistry. Many of my new patients were partially or totally indentulous. My treatment presentations back then were all about the dentistry. I'd explain the relationship between ridge resorption and denture retention. I'd show visual aids of demonstration-sized implants and talk about surgical insertion techniques. <laughs> over, time, over time, I realized patients were far more responsive when I told stories about other patients like them whom I had helped, stories about benefits, how my patients could enjoy eating again or have confidence in their appearance or be able to speak with clarity. When I coach dentists now, I see my early self in them. Not only do they over explain technical procedures, but so many feel obligated to talk about all the high technology in the practice. Do you really think patients accept care because you have a 3D printer? <laughs> the bad habit of overemphasizing clinical benefits over behavioral ones is that dentists often fail to discover the behavioral benefits patients seek from dental care. This is especially true with patients needing complex care. The clear majority, the clear majority of conditions of complex care patients are chronic. They've had dental problems for years. The path to discovering their behavioral benefits is to ask the why now question during the new patient interview. For example, during the new patient interview, your new patient, Jack, explains it's been years since he's been to the dentist. He currently wears a removable partial denture. During the exam, you see all the conditions you'd expect with long-term partial denture patients ill-fitting prosthesis, mobile teeth, moderate periodontal disease, and on and on and on. During the post-exam discussion, you learn more about Jack's dental history and how he lost his teeth when he was in the military. When Jack finishes his story, ask the why now question. It sounds like this. Jack, you've told me it's been years since you've been to the dentist. What's going on now that makes dental care important? <laughs> Chances are excellent. Jack and patients like him will reveal one of two reasons. First, many patients will tell you about an, an upcoming life event that makes dental care important. Jack may say he enjoys Ironman competitions and is concerned about the partial when he swims. The second common answer to the why now question is that patients have improved their financial situation and are ready to get the dentistry they've wanted for years. I recommend including more behavioral benefits during your treatment presentations and reserving discussions about technical procedures during the consent conversations. The why now question often is the first step in selling the sizzle and not the steak. When it becomes critical that your practice better fulfills its vision of providing excellent new patient experiences and improved treatment acceptance, my work becomes the perfect companion to fulfill that vision. When you're ready to discover more, consider visiting Treatment Acceptance Mastery. Thanks for listening.